just kind of teasing me. Now it's time to show a for action. Just all I can. Welcome back to Robby Minds. I'm joined by a social commentator, Emeke Anayi. Welcome to Robby Minds. Thank you so much. So I'm sure you are following the conversation from earlier on in the first segment. And we touched on quite a lot of things. And the reality of being a Nigerian now and in different parts of the world is grappling with high cost of living, namely food inflation, um, amongst others. You still have like the cost of shelter, you have issues with transportation that has also doubled. And I just want us to look at things from a policy level. Um, the government is saying we should give time for some of these painful decisions to materialize. And when we look at agriculture, food security policies to address the food inflation, we have the Anchor Boras program, we have the Nigeria Agri business and agro-industry development initiatives and all these are uh, things we hear about but are they effective are these policies addressing the issues around the supply chain are these um, issues um, these policies addressing the issues within that agricultural sector i think uh, in terms of the policies of the government thus far the government continue to make you know tell the people that these policies will assist you but in checking the effectiveness of this policy, you have to ask the ordinary person on the street to say, do they feel the, this impact? Are they aware of these policies that you're making? And how true is it in terms of implementation? So if actually the people the, at the receiving end do not even know what these things are about, or even if they are, they are aware, they do not have the ability to actually get the reward of it, then it means that it will not be providing the numbers of... Uh, how will I put it? So if you go further to see, the reason why government made the policies, actually in the first place, you have to first of all consult the people. And these people that you are making these policies for are not even aware of it. And if the policies exist, they do not seem to even know the advantage of these policies. So I doubt if these policies are actually fulfilling the purposes that they are meant for. I mean, earlier on, we're talking about the issues around agriculture, food yeah. security, and something that has come up is the security in general, because farmers are unable to get to their farms mm -hmm. because of the banditry. Mm -hmm. And as a result of that, they're not able to get food as quickly in the kind of quantity we want. So there was a time when tomatoes, which is easily consumed by so many people, went through the roof in terms of the price. So back to your point about that consultation yeah. how should the government be consulting people within a sector to be able to pass policies that will be effective yes so the gov when you talk about governance it's about the people so if you make policies without consulting the people then you have issue so for example the security issue so farmers as it is today so a great number of farmers in the north and some other uh, part of the country are complaining that we do not have access to our farm and security you might uh, improve other sectors of the economy but if security is not okay everything falls so you may choose to say okay let's increase the electricity let's do this but if there's no security for that then definitely it will crumble so I don't see a situation whereby the government actually will also work on those aspects of it Hmm. Oh. And 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 you know when you say security affects everything, it actually does because mm. if people can't go to work, if they can't go to their farms, or maybe you look at the southeast, for example, they have a sit-at-home order, they can't go out on Mondays, for example, it affects productivity. Now I want us to move to something that a lot of people have said if we can get this right, like security will be able to solve problems. And that's education. And we know that there is a demand for tertiary education. Yeah. The jobs out there are asking for two ones. They're asking for experience. But yet, um, people can't afford it. Now, the government has come up with the student loan. And some people have spoken about how, how accessible is it. In your own view, do you think the student loan is effective and do you think um, the government got it right with this kind of intervention? I, I think uh, in measuring the effectiveness of the student loan, you have to first of all take a look at, okay, clearly the application is online. So, but what I would anchor on is to say that government has not been doing enough to further sensitize the people about this loan. Because if you take a look at the report, you said some certain, uh, some states, they have difficulty to actually 
access this loan. That is, some don't even know about what this loan is about. So there has to be a massive sensitization program for this. It's a good program uh, because education, once you are able to uh, improve the education through access to education, then you, you are a step ahead in terms of improving the economy and also increasing the level of literacy level. Mm. So there's a lot of sensitization and a lot of sensitization to has to be done to achieve and this. i think that that was a point you made when we we're looking at the agricultural the food sector yeah. that some of these initiatives might be there but if people don't know about them then how can they even be effective exactly. in, in the first place so what does government need to do to create that sensitization so we are in uh, a digital a digital world and uh, so let's take for example the, the farmers so you, you may even see that, okay, the farmers, not all of them have access to these uh, technologies, but these people interact. So it, you, you have to take your sensitization program back to the grassroots. So a situation whereby you see a farmer in the village and you think that, okay, if I continue to put off adverts on television, on newspapers, some of these people don't have access to that. Some. So... In such situation, you have to adopt a medium that will be able to take into consideration the peculiarity of those people that, who are not easily reached. So by that type of sensitization, you would have been able to, you know, cover the feed. So to me, I feel that it is not enough to just post things uh, on social media. It's not enough to just make a newspaper publication. You have to go to the roots, the people, the end users to know whether are they, do they know what this thing is about? And if they do, how can they assess it? And you have to reduce the requirement because some of these people might not be, you know, vast on assessing if you make the application to be online. How are they going to assess it? So those are the things that need to be considered. So really reaching them in their language, yes. reaching them in the medium that they consume. So whether it's radio, using local language, breaking it down. And you, you spoke about the requirements, um, looking at what they can afford, yes. whether it's... Um, the, the collateral, whether it's the, the down payments, what is feasible. So government needs to be more in tune. I'd like to move to um, something that, you know, has been, has been on the news for a while. And a lot of Nigerians have come out to say, look, we can't continue living like this with the minimum wage. Cost of living has doubled, tripled. And yes, we got to the... The, the figure of 70,000 Naira, but is that minimum wage, does it reflect the realities of the Nigerian? Is that a good figure or should we have pushed for more? I, I, I think uh, we should push for better economic policies because if you push for better economic policies and improved government, governance and economies, then you will not be so much bothered about the figure. So if you increase this minimum wage to 120,000 and inflation there is hyperinflation, then it will reduce the value of that 120,000. So if actually the ending power of that um, 70,000 Naira would measure up, then it will be fine. So determining the effectiveness of that minimum wage as to know whether it is okay or it is not okay, you have to know the purchasing power of that 70,000 Naira. But as it is today, the purchasing thousand power of 70,000 Naira is far lower. And as such, you cannot actually classify that it's an improved uh, or enhance minimum wage. So, so what are some economic policies that this government should be implementing so that we have that all-round development that, as in your own words, increases the purchasing power of the Naira? So it's a holistic approach. So you won't just pick an, uh, one sector of the economy in isolation of the other. And I've made mention to say that, okay, the beginning is security. Because once you have security, at least you can build things on it. But if there's no security, there's nothing. So government has to improve the security system. And also in terms of trade and investment, you know, people want to see transparency. And I want uh, predictability in terms of uh, doing business in Nigeria. So if, I, if you make policies today, be consistent with it. So a situation whereby you make a particular policy today, tomorrow you say something else, then people won't trust you. Even the foreign investors will be skeptical uh, interacting with you. So I think that the government has to, you know, make policies in terms of uh, transparency, trade and investment. And to me, also in terms of agriculture, it is not, en it is not enough 
for you to just okay say you want to continue to give people once in a while you give bag of rice and all that you have to give them the seed you have to give them the avenue you have to give them the environment to plant so once they are able to do that then they will be able to generate income and they will not even need that bag of rice because they've been able to you've been able to enhance their earning ability so they are, with that they can live comfortably that is my own point of view in that. But in, in the short run, mm. what, are, what are the quick wins? Because in the midst of um, the protest, uh, the president came out and took some very bold decisions and said, okay, they're going to open the borders and um, they're going to lift the imports on um, food importation, the import duties. Mm. So I was listening to you and you were saying, look, you can't say one thing today and you say another thing tomorrow. Yeah. But what happens in situations where you have to make choices to address the immediate needs is that the way to go yeah so to me the decisions you make uh because governance is about listening to the people so you have a situation where by the cities and the general public are, are shouting complaining to say that saying that we are suffering we are suffering so part of what you have to do as a, you know the head of government is to call these people to say okay what what and what will i be able to do to actually cushion the effect effects of, of this and you might not be able to have the exact perception of what the, the people at the receiving end are suffering until you are able to go to them to say, okay, what and what what are the policies that I should take? But in another aspect is that okay, you also have known better when you took up the mantle of leadership. So to me, I feel that government should have this open consultation with the people. So open consultation with the people will be able to tell the government to say, okay, these are the pressing area. And part of it is issue of the uh, the, the PMS. Part of it is the issue of the PMS. So a situation whereby there is a reduction in the price, that would, to a great extent, cushion the effect. So I believe that a, a step in the right direction will include reduction in the price of where. So, so in essence, this government needs to be in tune with the people. Yes. Th this government needs to consult so that they don't just take reactive decisions, but they are more proactive mm. in the decision-making. Yes, people-oriented decisions. People-oriented decisions. Thank you very much, Emeke Anai, a social commentator, for being our guest here on Robbing Minds. Yeah, great to, great to be here. If I want to get with you, don't just stand there teasing me. Now it's time to show up.